Thank you for tuning in to HR Revivals. It's always the hour for revival. I'm bringing the Lord, Brother HR. It's always the hour for revival. Father, hide me behind the cross. It'll be none of me, but all of you. In Jesus' name, it's with us. Clay, let me leave here singing. I got just what I wanted from the Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost, I love you, Lord Jesus. God has got a word for the body of Christ today. Thank you, Jesus. Today's message is entitled, When Your Giant Ain't Got a Prayer. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost, I love you, Lord Jesus. So many times, and it seems like it's lately, the body of Christ seems to be facing another giant after another giant after another giant. But thank you, Holy Ghost, I love you, Lord Jesus. The giants only come to show you how big your God is. Because it's never you who defeats your giant. It's the God in you that defeats your giant. Bless your Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. I love what it says. Don't tell your God how big your problem is. Tell your problem how big your God is. Amen. Bless your Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. So today we're going to talk about how big our God is because our giants that we're facing, be it physical, spiritual, whatever. There is a God in heaven who is greater than the giant you're facing on this earth today. Bless you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. He is the giant slayer. He is the giant killer. And he destroys every giant in our life. And the Bible said he's disarmed the principalities and powers. Bless you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Turn with me to 1 Samuel 17, 38 through 54. 1 Samuel 17, 38 through 54. Today I'm preaching about when your giant ain't got a prayer. I hope that was a pretty good introduction. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. 1 Samuel 17, 38 through 54. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And Saul armed David with his armor, and it put a helmet of brass upon his head, and also he armed him with a coat of mail, meaning a very heavy, heavy metal upon his body. Do you know if we go in to a situation and we got the same outlook as the other person, we're going to receive the same outcome. Bless your Holy Ghost, I love you, Lord Jesus. We got to have a mentality of where we know who we are in God. Thank you, Holy Ghost, I love you, Lord Jesus. And David girded his sword upon his armor, verse 39, and he essayed to go. He hesitated to go, for he had not proven it. And David said, Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proven them. And David put them off of him. Bless your Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord. Do you know I've heard people say, well, I just guess the heavens are brass. I, I can't get God to answer me. Do you know if you put into your mindset of a brass helmet, if you put into your mindset that the heavens are brass, that's all you're ever going to get is brass. Brass and grass. Come on now. You're going to get grass in the valley. You're going to get grass stains on your prayer legs while you're praying. And you ain't going to get nothing but brass because you're thinking in a brass mentality. He had to get the brass off of his mind. Come on, Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. David girded his sword upon him. Now, he put the sword on him, but then he had to take it all off. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. If he would have went into the battle zone with the mindset of a brass mind saying, I wonder what's going to happen. He knew who he was in God. But if he would have went in there with that attitude of I don't know if it's going to come out right. Just like Saul had that attitude. What works for one don't work for all. Come on now. Bless you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Why do so many go into the valley of the giant and get slain? Because they don't know the attitude to have. They got to have an attitude of gratitude, but they also got to have an attitude as I know who I am in the Lord. Bless you, Holy Ghost. I do love you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Is somebody getting blessed right there? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Verse 
Which kingdom are you with? He had to get out of the worldly mindset. He had to get out of a worldly kingdom mindset. Come on now. He had to fight with supernatural faith. Because he was fighting a being that was physical, but yet at the same time supernatural. And I'm going to show you that in a few minutes. Bless you, Lord. I love you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. And he took now his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag which he had even in a script in the scriptures he had the scripts in his hand and he put them in his bag and when he put them in the bag hey glory the scripts were wrapped the word was wrapped up in that rock bless you holy ghost i love you lord jesus hallelujah and I'm going to show you the significance of why he chose five smooth stones in a few minutes. You're going to love this message. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost, to love you, Lord Jesus. And his sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. And the Philistine came on and drew near unto David. And the man that bare the shield went before him. What shield? Goliath's armor bearer went before Goliath. Bless your Holy Ghost, I love you, Lord Jesus. See, that's what the movies don't tell you. Hallelujah. The, Philist the Philistine looked about and saw David, and he disdained him. For he was but a youth and ruddy and of a fair countenance. He looked at him and said, this ain't no threat. He told his armor bearer to go sit down. Oh, come on now. Bless your Holy Ghost to live it, Lord. When the enemy don't find you a threat, he's going to tell one of his, his second-in-command demons to go sit down if he don't find you a threat. The Bible said Christ has already disarmed every principality and power and made sport of them. Ha-ha! <laughs> Glory, hallelujah, Holy Ghost to live it, Lord Jesus. And the Philistines came and drew near unto David, and the man that bare the shield went before him. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he, dis, he disdained him. He told him to sit down, for he was but a youth and ruddy. That means he was short and of a fair countenance. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost, still every Lord. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog that thou comest to me with staves? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. He was calling down witchcraft upon the man of God. So many times we don't see the giant we're facing is a spiritual one. See, David looked beyond the flesh and stepped into a realm of the faith, and he saw what the giant never did. Help me, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Somebody shout, that's good preaching. I'm getting something from the Lord. Bless you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. And the Philistine cursed David by his gods, the little gods. He called the little demons to try and come against David. The Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air, and unto the beast of the field. Then said David unto the Philistine, With a spear thou comest to me with a sword, but and with a spear, and with a shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. <laughs> this day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand, and I will smite thee and give thine head from thee. Take thine head from thee, and I will give the carcass of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth. And all of the earth may know, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Hey, hey bless your Holy Ghost. And all the assemblies shall know that the Lord saveth, not with sword nor spear, for the battle is the Lord's. And he will give you into our hands. 
He's saying what you say you're going to do to me. You better get ready to back it up because, baby, I'm going to do it to you. He was saying what's good for the goose is good for the gander. But hallelujah, thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord. He's saying I got more than a goose or a gander. I got the glory of the Lord. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. I can't help but shout about this message. I'm trying to help somebody get out of their valley of giants today. Bless your Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. And all the assemblies shall know that the Lord saveth not with the sword of the spear, for the battle is the Lord and will, and he will give you into our hands. Notice he went from his hand to their hands. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord. He's saying, I ain't celebrating by myself. We're going to all praise the Lord after this thing's over. Glory, hallelujah. You don't need ju people just to worry with you. You need, actually, you don't need people to worry with you. You need people who are going to rejoice with you even when the battle looks like there's no way you're going to win. And when the battle's over, you need somebody to rejoice with you that you knew the battle was going to be won. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. And David put his hand in his bag and took thence a stone and slang it and smote the Philistine in his forehead that the stone sunk into his forehead and he fell upon his the face his face to the earth so David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone smote the Philistine slew him but there was no sword in the hand of David hey hey Bless your Holy Ghost, I love you, Lord Jesus. But the sword of the Spirit's what went forward. Hallelujah. Bless your Holy Ghost, I do love you, Lord Jesus. So David prevailed over the Philistine with the sling, with the stone, and the smoke, the Philistine, and slew him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. Bless your Holy Ghost, I love you, Lord Jesus. Therefore David ran and stood upon the Philistine and took his sword and drew it out of the sheath thereof and slew him and cut off his head there within, and when the Philistines saw their champion was dead, they fled. And the men of Israel arose and shouted and pursued the Philistines. Under there came the valley and the gates of Ekron, and they wounded the Philistines, fell down, and they were to Sherem, even unto Gath and unto Ekron. Now it's interesting that Goliath was from the land of Gath. Now the Bible says that David, wait a minute, oh, okay, wait a minute, I'm not done yet. Thank you, Holy Ghost, I love you, Lord, hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And the children of Israel returned from chasing after the Philistines, and they spoiled their tents, and David took the head of the Philistine and brought him into Jerusalem, brought it to Jerusalem and brought it to Jerusalem, but he put his armor in his tent. Bless you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. He disarmed the enemy and kept the enemy's army uh, armor as a trophy under the victories of our God. Bless you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Why did he take the enemy's army, armor? Thank you, Lord. But not the armor of his king. Because his king was walking in the flesh because he had already lost favor and faith with God. But the enemy he was fighting was a spiritual enemy. And he didn't defeat him with physical weapons. He defeated him with a spiritual weapon. The word of God defeated that giant. Bless your Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Now, I also believe medically what happened because he hit him in the forehead it's possible because of the build and make of the giant it's very possible he could have had an aneurysm and died it never says it's that what happened but i thought it was pretty interesting when the lord brought that to my attention but it was the word that killed the giant because the word was coming up against a spirit because we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers of darkness and rulers of this wicked world amen Bless your Holy Ghost, I love you, Lord. Bless everybody listening, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Before he ever went into battle, he had to take off the armor of flesh and put on the armor of faith. He knew that the weapon of our warfare was not carnal, but mighty for the, by the power of God for pulling down a stronghold. Bless your Holy Ghost, I love you, Lord Jesus. 
He went out there armed and dangerous with the Word of God. Notice he wrapped the stone in the script. That's the scripture. The stones were being anointed with the very Word of God. Bless your Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Which is also the sword of the Spirit. Bless your Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord. So really when the Word left his hand, the victory already had went out of his mouth. By the time that sword left, by the time that stone, which was the, had the word of God wrapped around it, left his hand, the victory already came out of his mouth. Bless you, Holy Ghost. I do love you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. So really, when the stone, with the five smooth stones, some would say, why would he take five smooth stones? Some would say it was to represent the grace of God for the fivefold ministry. I've heard both examples before, but this is something that's going to blow your mind, body of Christ. According to the Bible and according to Jewish history, Goliath had, uh, according to the, um, according to Jewish history, the five books of the Bible, the um, Mosaic books, according to the mysteries of the Jewish people, Goliath had five brothers. So those stones represented each giant that would fall. He was going to send the whole family to hell. He wasn't done with just one giant. He was declaring a prophetic victory over every giant that he would ever face. Bless you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Because the Bible said he faced more than one giant. We're going to get into that in a minute. Bless you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord. I don't mean to shout, but when you got the Holy Ghost, baby, I can't help but shout. Oh, I do love you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Do you know why he had five smooth stones? Because David, uh, Goliath had five brothers. Goliath was from the land of God. And the Bible said that we know, as we just read, that David buried the head of the giant in Jerusalem. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to deal with this in a minute. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I'm getting ahead of myself now. I'm excited about this word for y'all. Bless you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord. Some would say because it's the number of grace or fivefold ministry. But Goliath had five brothers. Those stones represented each giant that would fall. The Bible says that he had an armor bearer just like Goliath did. But when the enemy looks at you and finds you to be not a threat, he's going to misjudge the way you look for who you really are. See, Samuel did it when he looked at David. And he said, Lord, it, this young man is but a child. And the Lord said, don't think he's a child. He says, well, I judge the heart not the outer appearance. Oh, some people in the church need to hear that, including in the holiness church. Amen. Bless your Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. So many times we're fighting giants and we don't even know why. But God's got a word today for the body of Christ. Bless your Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Some would say, <clears throat> the Bible says that he had an armor bearer. But when the enemy looks at your you like you're not a a threat but because he don't see your heart he sees your outer shell hallelujah holy ghost I love you. he don't see you like god sees you amen come on now bless your holy ghost to love you lord the bible says that the armor bearer was set down amen bless your holy ghost to love you lord and just like that giant made the mistake to let his armor bearer sit down, the enemy is going to look at you and find you not a threat at first. He's going to let down his guard. He's going to let down his armor barrier. His armor bearer, do you get what I'm saying? Hey, Shadabosa, bless your Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I hear the Lord say, child, smile more. Smile more. He said, consider it great joy when you go through diverse temptations and trials. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. That's when, you're, that's when you realize your giant ain't got a prayer. We don't know what happened in the mind of the... Uh, we don't know what happened in Goliath's mind. The Bible don't tell us that. Except he laughed and saw David is not a threat, so... He set him down, so I guess it does say that. But, you know, you, you know, he didn't... I really wonder what he thought right before that stone hit him. Oh, no, I've done it now. 
<laughs> or something. I don't know what he thought. But I'm just saying, David knew something his enemy didn't know. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Bless the Lord. Because nobody was representing their faith in the camp. So since nobody was representing their faith, the enemy said, well, this is a good opportunity. Nobody's representing their faith. Obviously, they ain't got nothing to represent in God. Not one person would go out there and fight him, I think, for 30 days it was like. And David said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? You know, both in flesh and in heart, he was, he was uncircumcised. He had no part with God. Giants were, were condemned to hell. They were damned from the beginning. Not one giant could ever go to heaven. And I'm going to explain that to you in a minute. Bless your Holy Ghost and love you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost, I love you, Lord. The Bible says that he had an armor bearer. We know that, amen, thank you, Jesus. The enemy let down his armor bearer or army barrier, amen, bless your Holy Ghost, I love you, Lord. The Bible says when the enemy comes in like the flood, the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, Lord. The Bible says that... Uh, I hear the Lord say he's going to send confusion to the enemy's camp. And the enemy is going to turn on himself and attack himself and destroy himself. And you're not even going to have to lift up your finger. I hear the Lord say, whoever that's for, receive it now. Bless you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. But the Bible says that the David cut the head of the giant off and buried it in Jerusalem. Amen. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Now, did you know that when there was a great victory that they would name the place after the place of victory. Goliath was from the land of Gath. Where did they run him back to? They ran every one of them back to the land of Gath. Oh, that means the brothers of the giant heard what happened to their brother and who done it. So they were going to come back and fight against their brother, against the one who killed their brother. I'm going to get to that in a minute. Bless your Holy Ghost. I do love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. Mark 15, 22. Thank you, Jesus. And I'm going to tell you right here real quick. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Bible said he buried in the place of Jerusalem. Goliath was from the land of Gath. The place where Christ died for our sins was called Golgotha or Golgotha. Or the place of the skull. It's not just because it looks like a skull. And for those of you listening to this video today, that picture is supposed to be a picture of the, of the rock of of Golgotha, you know, where Christ is crucified. So that's why it looks like that. If I was having anybody wondering why my picture wasn't there. It ain't about me. It's about the Word of God. Bless your Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. So it's really a focal point in this message. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Bless your Holy Ghost. I do love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Goliath was from the land of Gath. The place where Christ died for our sins was called Golgotha, or Golgotha, or the place of the skull. It's not just that it looks like a skull, it's cause the skull of Goliath was buried there. Mark 15, 22. Come on, somebody. Now we're getting a little bit deeper. Bless you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Matthew 15, 22. Bless you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord. Amen. And behold, a woman of Canaan. Wait a minute. Oh, that's Matthew. <laughs> Mark. Bless you, Holy Ghost. I do love you, Lord Jesus. Mark 15, 22. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord. I bet people are wondering, boy, is he ever going to get any further than this? Yeah, I am. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. But there's so much that could just go on with that one story. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Mark 15, 22. Bless your Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And they bring him, bring him up unto the place of Golgotha, which is being interpreted the place of a skull. The place of a skull. Why? It ain't just because it looked like a skull from where it was positioned. There was a skull outside of Jerusalem put there thousands of years before Christ would come. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. I do love you, Lord Jesus. It was the skull of a giant. 
And the very word was fulfilled when God had spoke to Satan in the garden and said, You will bruise his heel, but he will crush your skull. Genesis 3.15. Bless your Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. I'm going to give just a few references. Thank you, Jesus. How does that turn in our favor? Because every How does that turn into our favor? Because every giant, spiritually speaking, that we would ever face was put under the foot and under the blood of Jesus Christ. If that don't get you to shouting, your spoon done fell out your bowl. Bless you, Holy Ghost. I do love you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Get your shouting. If that don't get you shouting, your spoon done fell out of your bowl. This is amazing. Remember I said that David settled the score with the giants of that land? The brothers of Goliath. Come on now. Second Samuel. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Now we're getting into the teaching. That was just the foundation. <laughs> Bless you, Holy Ghost. I do love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Second Samuel 21, 15 through 22. Bless your Holy Ghost. To love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Moreover, the Philistines had yet a war again. That's the second time with them, with Israel. And David went down and his servant with him and fought against the Philistines. And David waxed faint. He grew tired. We're not alone in the battle zone, friend. Bless your Holy Ghost. I do love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. And Ishbib, Ishbanab, which was of the sons of the giants. Now remember, these were the Philistines, and there was another giant with them. Where did he come from? He was from the family of... Mm -mm -mm. Come on now, bless your Holy Ghost, the living Lord. He was from the family of Goliath. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost, the living Lord Jesus. The weight of his spear weighed 300 shekels of brass. And there's brass again. And went and weight. He being girded with a new sword, thought to slay, have slain David. He was against David. Why? He had a vendetta against him because he killed the brother Goliath. He killed his brother Goliath. It wasn't just another giant who had never heard of David, but it said he had a new sword. What happened to the sword of the family member? The, oh, I'm getting ready to get into that in a minute. Bless your Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I do love you, Holy Ghost. Amen. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord. Amen. But Abisha, but Abisha, the son of Zura, secured him and smote the Philistine and killed him. Then the men of David swore unto him, saying, Thou shalt go no more out with us to battle, that thou quench not the light of Israel. He was saying, you done this against David. He said, instead, instead of praising God for the victory, they looked at it as that you shouldn't have defended the king. He was doing his job and got no credit, but he got rebuked for doing his job. My Lord, have mercy. Ain't it like that in the kingdom of God today? We do the work of God, and people say, well, you shouldn't have done that for the Lord. What were you thinking? What's the matter with you? A prophet is not with honor in his own hometown. He's got no honor among his family because they knew him before he knew Jesus. Amen. Bless your Holy Ghost. I do love you, Lord Jesus. I do love you. Amen. I love you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And it came to pass after this that there was again a battle with the Philistines of Gab, Sibrach, Hashat, Slu, Saoth, which was the sons of the giant. There's another one. And there was again a battle in Gob, in Gob with the Philistines where Elan, the son of Jerogon and Bethlehemite, slew his brother of Goliath, the brother of Goliath, the judge's sight, the staff of those whose spear was like a weaver's beam. There it is. These are the brothers of Goliath, and they're dropping in the ground. You can't mess with God's people. Bless you, Holy Ghost. I do love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. And there was yet a battle in Gath, 
where was a man of great stature that had one hundred on every hand six fingers and on every foot six toes. Four and twenty in number. Four hundred and twenty in number. And he also bore to the giants. And when he defiled Israel, John, John Jonathan, the son of Shema, the brother of David, slew him. Him. This, excuse me, my voice tried to cut out. These four were born to the giant of Gath and fell by the hand of David. But, oh, shut up, Abbasata. Fell by the hand of David and by the hand of his servants. So there was five brothers altogether. Goliath was one of the five brothers. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost, I love you, Lord. But David didn't need five stones. But he took them at the word of God and wrapped them up. He took them to the word and said, if this one falls, the other ones are going to fall too. Bless you, Holy Ghost. I do love you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. These four were born to the giant in Gath and fell at the hand of David by the hand of his servants. So when David buried the giant's head, the giant Goliath buried his head on the mountaintop. The blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ, came upon the head of the giant, crushing the seed of the serpent. Hey, glory, hallelujah, Holy Ghost, I love you, Lord. But also declaring every battle we'd ever face won by the blood's victory. The Bible said we overcame him, the devil, by the blood of the by the blood of the Lamb, Jesus, and by the word of our testimony. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Somebody better get to shout and thank you, Jesus. It was David's armor bearer who took him out. Notice, it was the Philistines, just like before, when he fought against them. Hey, hey, bless you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. The first time David was just with God and no one with him except God the Father. That's all you need. Bless your Holy Ghost. I do love you, Lord Jesus. The first time David was just with God. You can't take the blow. and you Sometimes you're fighting in the battle and you feel like you can't take the blows no more. Bless you, Holy Ghost. I do love you, Lord Jesus. That's when God will raise up righteous warriors who are willing to take a hit. Take one for the team. He got rebuked for fighting for Israel. The guy did who defended David. Bless your Holy Ghost. I do love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your Holy Ghost. I do love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. When you can't take the blows no more, that's when God will raise up righteous warriors who are willing to take a hit if need be to protect the prophets of God. And the prophetesses of God. Bless your Holy Ghost. I do love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Let me show you the giants came from the through angels, as we know, crossing DNA with heaven and earth. These angels produced giants. Literally, the reason these men were so tall and so strong. It was beyond human strength for them to carry them beams and, and swords and the ways that they raged war was unhuman. It was angelic. They were fighting giants in a physical level when they should have been fighting them on a supernatural level. Bless the Holy Ghost, I do love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I hope somebody's getting blessed by this message. Bless the Holy Ghost, I do love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. With heaven and earth, these angels cross DNA. Literally, the reason these men were so tall and so strong, notice that they were strong men. They had, they had strands of DNA of human and angelic beings. So they was natural and supernatural. As far as flesh and blood go, they were natural. But they had a supernatural ability and strengths that no human ever would have. Genesis 6 and 4 said that there was a race of giants. Come on now. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I do love you, Lord Jesus. Didn't come this far to stop now. We're going to go all the way with this message, baby. Bless you, Holy Ghost. I do love you, Lord Jesus. 
I hope you don't mind me shouting tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Genesis 6 and 4. Bless you, Holy Ghost. I do love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. These were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came unto daughters, the daughters of men, they bare children to them. The same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. And God saw the wickedness of man's heart, that it was great in the earth that every imagination of the thoughts of the hearts was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him in his heart. Literally, God was sorry that he ever made man. When it means he repented, now he's not ever, now he's never made a mistake. But God wished he had never made man. He didn't say it was a mistake to make man. He just wished he had never made man so man could never have made them stupid mistakes. But God had compassion. He still had a rescue plan. He said, I'm going to rescue all who would listen. So he found a man named Noah. Bless your Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. And only, I think... Like, only Noah's house, I know the Bible says, was saved, but I can't remember how many it was. I think it was five in his house total. The number of grace was saved. Bless your Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord. How? By water baptism. That's in Second Peter, I believe it is, somewhere. It says that only Noah's family was saved through water baptism before the flood. Oh, come on now. That's where water baptism was originally introduced. It was even before Moses' law. Come on now, bless your Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Somebody getting blessed and teach today? Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. As I was doing this study, I found out that these people had physical problems. As we've done read in 2 Samuel 21, 20, about the fingers and the toes, you know, all them fingers and toes. He could count his own days of destruction ahead of him. <laughs> Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. He had physical impairments in his body. So really, that is a spirit of disease because these people, when they died, could not go to heaven because they were a cursed generation. Help me, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord. They had to go somewhere, so they dispersed as spirits in the earth. Bless your Holy Ghost. I do love you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 Lord. 2 Samuel 21, 20. As we read, he had physical ailments. One king had a bed size that would have filled a football field. Deuteronomy 3 and 11. And he was the last race of the giants, the Bible says. But I don't care how big the giant is the bigger they are the harder they fall baby thank you holy ghost i do love you lord jesus amen thank you lord that was the last physical race at that time bless you holy ghost i do love you lord jesus amen thank you lord now i'm going to say something don't get offended with me i thought it was pretty interesting though you know everybody wants to know if ufos are real they are the nephilim Friend, these UFOs that you hear talking about, they're the Nephilim. Jesus said that as it was in the days of Noah, so would it be before the Lord returned. Luke 17, 26 through 27. Bless your Holy Ghost. I do love you, Lord Jesus. But what am I saying? Did you know that when Israel became, do the research. Did you know there was always these little sightings of aliens? Do the research, though. You'll find out for yourself that the increase of these Nephilim started happening around the time Israel became a nation. 19, uh, when did Israel become a nation? 1978, I think. The day, or 1975, Israel became a nation when they did this 
increased immediately the day following. Israel became a nation. Now it's all over the place. Now it's crazy because these are the Nephilim. They're trying to reestablish authority in the earth. Now, is that biblical? Yes, because Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah. What was in the days of Noah? Giants were in the days of Noah. Bless you, Holy Ghost. I do love you, Lord Jesus. There's somebody listening to me now. So you might have a giant of debt in your life. You might have a giant of sickness in your life. You might have a giant of oppression or depression in your life. God is bigger than your giant. Bless you, Holy Ghost. I do love you, Lord Jesus. Sometimes, like I said, I don't care how big the giant is. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. Sometimes in the fight, we feel like we can't go on. We just need someone to remind us of the form of victories. First Samuel, go back to First Samuel. Oh, I, I tell you, I should have told you, by the way, we're camping in First Samuel tonight. Bless your Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord. Bless your Holy Ghost. This message is bless my socks off. Thank you, Jesus. 1 Samuel 21. Remember this. The Bible said there'll be signs in the heavens in these last days and in the earth. Amen. Bless your Holy Ghost. I do love you, Lord Jesus. Everything that I've said today, you can back up through research. So if you're interested enough in doing it, research is very interesting. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I do love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. I bless and love you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 1 Samuel. 21 and 9. Bless your Holy Ghost. I do love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And the priest said that the sword of Goliath and the Philistines, whom that thou slewest in the valley of Eli, behold, it is there wrapped in a cloth behind the ephod. If thou wilt take that, take it, for there is none other save that here. And David said, There is none like that. Give it to me. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. David was in a time of depression and oppression, and the Lord reminded him of a victory that he won in the Lord. And he actually gave him the sword <laughs> of his giant. Bless you, Holy Ghost. I do love you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hold your peace and let the Lord fight your battle and the victory shall be yours. Somebody needed to hear that today. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I do love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. You know I'm not afraid to go and uh, get into the people's face. Hallelujah. Bless your Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, if I sound like I'm some conspiracy nut I'm not trust me because I said Lord I really don't want to say that and the Lord said it must be said it he said people need to know about this stuff I said alright Lord I'll say it thank you Holy Ghost I love you Lord we are fighting spiritual battles we're fighting spiritual battles in a physical world don't you think it's time we start looking at a spiritual sight setting our eyes on the spiritual sight and stop setting it on the physical Bless your Holy Ghost, I do love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Interestingly enough, just like David, his descendant, interestingly enough, just like David did, his descendant, our Kingsman Redeemer, will come riding through the portals of heaven, down through, down through the Kidron Valley, in to the battlefield of Armageddon, when he does that honey, that honey, let me tell you, when he does that, honey, your giant ain't got a prayer. Bless your Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. When he does that, honey, your giant ain't got a prayer. The battle is spoke of the first time in Revelation 16, 
13 through 19. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody shout, thank you, Jesus. Revelation 16, 13 through 19. I'm going to give you the last four references right here because we're running out of time. I was hoping I'd get to read every one of them. Thank you, Lord. Amen. The battle is first spoke, Revelation 16, 13 through 19. Bless your Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. My ears are literally burning in the glory. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. 13 through 19 of Revelation 16. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirit of devils working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battlefield, the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked, and they see his shame. Bless your Holy Ghost. I do love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. The enemy is going to make people think he's the one who's came to save the world after the trumpet is blown, after the saints are gone. The enemy is going to come in deceiving people with fake miracles and making it look like it's really, like he's really the, the one that's in charge. And he's going to lead them to the battle of Armageddon. Bible said in Revelation 19, 11 through 21, it talks about the ending climax of that battle. Bless you, Holy Ghost. I do love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Bless everybody, Holy Ghost, listening. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The final climactic battle of good versus evil. Don't forget this, that Jesus said in, Matt, in Luke 17, 26 through 27, as it was in the days of Noah, so will it be before the Lord returns. In Revelation 9.14, we read of four angels bound in the river Euphrates that according to Jewish history and study, these are the ones who caused the whole race of giants. And that's why they've been there for a day, an hour, and time that's been set. And the Bible says they will kill a third of mankind. These angels are bound in the river Euphrates. They're wicked angels. How did they fall? They were the ones that started the race of giants. Revelation 9.14 Saying to the sixth angel which had the trumpet, Loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour and day and the month and a year for to slay the third part of man. Bless you, Holy Ghost. I do love you, Lord Jesus. Bless you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. What am I saying? Don't let the giants keep you out of the promised land. Numbers 13, 33 spoke about the giants, how it almost kept them out of the promised land. Don't let a giant keep you out of getting into your promise. How do they keep them out? It wasn't that they fought them and knew about them. It was they opened their mouth and said, we can't win against them. We are small and they are large. Let the weak say, I am strong, Jude said. Let the poor say, I am rich. Come on now. Let the sick say, I am healed. Somebody shout with me. Don't let a giant keep you out of your promised land. Keep your mouth guarded and your eyes open and your ears open tuned to the voice of God and you will win every battle no matter what giant is in your land remember the bigger they are the dumber they are too the bigger they are the harder they fall hallelujah holy ghost I love you Lord Jesus it was the way that we it's the way we respond to the position we're in that makes us either miss or receive our miracle 
Come now if you're lost or backslid. Pray this prayer with me. Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Wash me in the blood. Fill me with your spirit that I might make heaven my home. I believe you died on the cross. That God the Father raised you from the dead. Thank you, Father, that I am saved in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, Lord. It's done in the name of Jesus. Now, if you're sick in your body, I command every spirit of infirmity loose you and let you go free. I curse every devil, every giant in your life of sickness. I command it turn you loose and let you go free in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Turn them loose, devil, in the name of Jesus. You can't have them no more. I command create a miracle in the name of Jesus from the body part room in heaven. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, by the power of the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name. Right now, creative miracle. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I do love you, Lord Jesus. Now, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke every devil of addiction over your life. Every bondage I break and destroy its yoke over your life. It can never be mended back together again. I command there to be no withdrawals, no desire to return, and no backlash. Holy Ghost, deliver them totally, Lord. In the name of Jesus, no issues again in that area of their life. Let them be totally set free by the power of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen. Because he who the Son sets free is free indeed. Bless your Holy Ghost to live Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I declare according to Nahum 1, 9, the attack cannot come back. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, amen. Bless you, Holy Ghost. I do love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Now I want to say this. If You've never been baptized in the Holy Spirit and fire. Jesus is a baptizer in the Holy Ghost and fire. And out of our bellies will flow rivers, that's multiple, of living water. Tongues of men and angels, amen. Bless your Holy Ghost to do love you, Lord Jesus. If you've never received that, I'm praying right now, Jesus, you are the baptizer in the Holy Ghost and fire now their belly will flow rivers of living water. Do it now, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, fire, 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 fire. Fire, 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 fire. Fire, fire, fire. In Jesus' name, remember, God is with you no matter what battle you're facing. Remember, don't tell your giant. Actually, wait a minute. Don't tell your God how big your giant is. Tell your giant how big your God is. Just like David did. And you're sure to win the battle if you keep your mind on the Word of God. Now go to a good Bible-believing church. Go and get filled with the Spirit of God. Read your Bible. Fast and pray and worship the Lord, and God's going to turn everything around for you. Thank you for tuning in to HR Revival. This is always the hour for revival. I'm the brother of the Lord, Brother HR, and it is always the hour for revival. I'll see you there in the next meeting or in the air in heaven. I love you. God bless.